It's time for Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. You know, another thing about guns. Just kidding. This is Wretched Radio. (laughs) Not even we are going to beat the horse that much. However, there is a subject that I'd like to tackle that I'm not all that nuts about. It's an author whose name we really haven't spoken about much because it seems to me the more that you sometimes talk about some people, all it does is introduce those people to more people and then they gain a following and they grow in their ability to mislead folks. And so we really haven't talked about this person that much. But we're going to break that rule because I think, even though she's she's going to be mentioned She's a test case. She's a study for us so that we can learn the modus operandi of people who profess to be Christians to lead people away from biblical Christianity. So this is not about Jen Hatmaker, even though we're going to talk about Jen Hatmaker. She somehow has been able to find her way into all kinds of platforms to really water down Christianity. And so we haven't talked about her because I just just don't want to deep spread her name. But we can study her so that when we run into other Gen Hat makers, we can know, I see what you're up to here. By the way, Gen Hat maker, didn't she make her fame by living biblically for a year? Wasn't that her deal? How did no, she? No, that was uh, uh, Rachel Held Evans. Sorry, the Year of Biblical Womanhood, which was yet another ripoff of uh, a, what was it uh, Jacobs? And that's going to be a TV show now, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. And that's another. That's it. Mm. I, they call, what do they call that new TV show? The Year of Living Biblically, whatever they're calling this new TV. Junk. No one's going to watch. And it's the reviews have been sort of like, eh, like pretty decent, I guess. Is it called The Year of Living? No, it's not called The Year of Living Biblically. What are they calling this new show? Joey, you find that out. And in the meantime... it's just like Living Biblically or something. Okay, so this this was the fellow who said, I'm going to try to live out every single rule in the Bible. Well, I remember when we reviewed this years ago. He didn't. Furthermore, he doesn't get the point that the laws are intended to drive us to the Savior... They're not intended to make us perfect because we can't. We're supposed to strive for that. But what the laws reveal, yikes, now I've got an accounting system. I could delude myself into thinking I've got this nailed without laws. But with the laws, you go, yikes, I I can't do this. I need a savior. That's the purpose of the law. This fellow, he decided to live a year trying to be kosher, etc. Turned it into a book. What a shocker. Now it's going to be a TV show called, what, Joey? Living Biblically. That's exactly what I said. And here's, here's the modus operandi behind that propaganda piece. Have you heard this one before? We just want to start a conversation. We just want people to be talking about spiritual things. No, you don't. You want to hack away at the Bible. That's, you want to mock Christianity. You want to use our Savior as a, as a prop for comedy. We're not amused. I just love that one. Well, we just we just wanted to, to do this crude art about Jesus, you know, just to get a conversation started. We wanted to present Jesus as fill in the blank, you know, just to spur people's imagination. No, thanks. We're fine without it. That is a that is another tool of liberalism. Jen Hatmaker has another tool. And this was written about by Michael J. Kruger, a very thoughtful little piece that helps us to understand what's up, what they're doing, the power of deconversion stories. The power of deconversion. We use conversion stories. Hey, this person, there, Costi Hin. Costi Hin, he worked for his uncle Benny for two years. He was thick in the prosperity movement, drove around in a Bentley. He done got saved. Now he went to seminary and he's pastoring a church preaching the Bible and trying to encourage his family to repent. And by the way, some of them are. I think Costi Hinn could be used as a massive tool to reach people who are under the delusion of his Uncle Benny. That's a conversion story. Jen Hatmaker and others use deconversion stories to lead people into their non-Christian 
mess. You know, I used to be, but now I'm this. Step number one, recount the negatives of your Christian past. Tell them about the narrow dogmatism of your evangelical history. And that way you flash your evangelical creds. Hey, I know what I'm doing here. I've studied this. I've been in this movement. I know what I'm talking about. And then tell everybody about the problems. And you know what I saw was fill in the blank. Dead orthodoxy. People who weren't loving. Worship wasn't there. They had too many rules. They were too judgmental. They weren't nice enough about. I know better now. That's what Jen Hatmaker does. And that's what a lot of people does. They share a deconversion story. Step number two. Position yourself as the offended party who fought the establishment. Jen says she was mistreated in ways that were scary, disorienting, crushing, devastating, and financially punitive. You see, when I came to my senses and recognized that evangelical Christianity, in other words, reading the Bible rightly, when I realized just how terrible it was and how crushing and mean those people are, they punished me. I don't get to speak in places anymore. They don't buy my books. She is the oppressed minority fighting against the so-called commercial Christianity. She's the victim of the evangelical world who's bent on revenge. In other words, she plays the victim card. And a lot of people do this. Basically, Pathios is where you'll find a lot of these. If one wants to talk about satire and outrage and internet hit pieces, Hatmaker might do well to observe the outrageous level of vitriol displayed by the LGBTQ community and its advocates toward any Christian who shows the slightest hesitation about our culture's new sexual orientation. That's from Michael J. Kruger. In other words, Jen talks about how mean we evangelicals are toward her. <laughs> Jen, there are court cases all over the country now of people doing things to evangelicals that is affecting their livelihood. Step number three for Jen and her deconversion story, portray your opponents, that's you and me, as overly dogmatic while you're just a seeker. And wow, doesn't that play well into the postmodern culture? She doesn't claim to know everything. Yeah, really, she does because she claims she she's figured out how religion works. Here's how religion works. It shouldn't be judgmental. Okay, that's judgmental. No matter how you slice it, you're telling people how it is. That should be a no-no, but it gets a pass because it just tickles the postmodern ears. Hatmaker is absolutely certain this is the way the Christian religion should work. She's dogmatic in her condemnation of dogmatism. She's no different. She insists on her way. But she plays this coy little, oh, I used to be a part of, and then they're, I, I learned so much that's so liberating, and they're so mean. And Christianity should just be loosey-goosey. For sure, that's what I'm telling you. See the irony? She's sure the Bible accepts the LGBTQ lifestyle and that the evangelical position is wrong and harmful. Apparently, she's forgotten her commitment to uncertainty. If we're all required to be uncertain in our interpretation, then what can we affirm? Basically, what nice, sweet, abused Jen Hatmaker says. Number four, insist your theology is driven by the Bible and not a rejection of it. Oh, I just want you to know I've done a lot of work. I've studied this so hard. I just really have, and now I know the truth. Forget what all of those, you know, trained men have studied years and decades. I've really, I've read a lot. And I traveled to India. She's mystified and frankly offended that anyone would doubt her commitment to the Bible, how they could question her faithfulness and commitment to Scripture. How's it about because she's rejected the plainest teachings of the Bible? Maybe that's it, but it gets a pass. That's what Jen Hatmaker said. Obviously, so much of what is written about homosexuality in Scripture is contextually bound. And there's not much in there, frankly, but it's deeply bound to culture, just like a thousand other points in the Bible are. That's just dopiness. That's why we question you, Jen. You make it sound a little bit too easy, just a wave of the hand to figure out all things. Topping it off, she said, there's never been unanimity ever on anything. 
This is why she has no credibility. Step number five in telling a good con deconversion story to lead others to deconvert. Attack the character of your old group and uplift the character of your new group. When I looked at the fruit of the non-affirming Christian tree, the fruit was so universally bad. It was suicide. It was broken families. Look at how she's painting us. Not very nice. But now these new people that I hang with, they're so accepting and they're so nice. And everybody's singing sunshine songs and eating candy all day and nobody's upset. It's just those big, bad, mean, horrible evangelical Christians who adhere to the Bible that don't know anything and are mean to everybody. That's the de deconversion tactic of Jen Hatmaker, and she is not alone. Perhaps she's perfected it, but she's not the only one. Be on the alert. We can look forward <coughs> to more deconversion stories. This is Wretched Radio. Shout out to our gospel partners. It is your ongoing monthly support that allows us to do Wretched Radio every single day and provide the broadcast, the entire program, for free to anybody on iTunes, Android, or at our website. Thank you for being a gospel partner. If you enjoy or benefit from Wretched Radio, would you please consider joining those partners so that we can continue to preach the gospel? Simply visit wretched.org.